I can't think of anything else that I could have done that has paid off as well and been as pleasant. The piano and music has been a, a great asset to us. There was always music and Daddy was always playing. A certain amount of that rubs off and music is probably the most important extracurricular thing in my life. I think music is half of your life. It should be anyway. I mean, so much pleasure. You, you can't really judge how much pleasure most people get out of music. It's very important. I love music. Well, I did a couple of muffs and that, a couple of grapefruits, but I, that's about the best I can do with it, I guess. I first started taking lessons, I think, when I was about eight years old. I really didn't care particularly a lot about it. I'd much rather have been playing kick the can or football or something in that line. But in any case, I, uh, when I first started making a little money at playing uh, in, in orchestra, you know, with an orchestra for dances, it, it didn't seem so, you know, it seemed, seemed so that I could put up with it, especially when I made at least $2 an hour. And through the music, I made a lot of very nice and long-lasting friends. Uh, one of my very best friends, Bill Tooley, was a banjo player. And we'd go out and play the officers' club on Friday night. Bill's a great guy, and, and uh, his father owned a Cadillac, and he filled the thing up with gas and would go pick us all up, and by the time we got out there and got back, uh, it cost, <laughs> cost his father more probably than we made. <laughs> So my uncle, he was on his way to El Paso, and he prevailed upon us that the opportunities and everything in music and every other line were in Los Angeles. So we got in our Model T Ford and drove to Los Angeles. When we left El Paso, it was in 22, and uh, then I graduated in summer 23 in Los Angeles at Mon Manual Arts High School. I went right from high school graduation to, 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 to Big Bear for three months and was through a friend, Marla Wines. He was a trombone player and his brother was a saxophone player. His brother had the summer job for logging it in and Big Bear. From there, I went to the University of Arizona in Tucson. My food bill was $30 a month and my house bill was 12 about four or five dollars is all I needed for extras, meal out or something like that. I used to play with a little four-piece group. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I got little help other than, the, than, the, than what I made in music, which was sufficient. He was very busy playing. He played in an orchestra to get through school. I know he played in a dance band at the Blue Moon where all the university students went. He was from Los Angeles and I was from Bisbee, Arizona. And uh, we were in, we had several classes together, but this was the English Lit. Hefner, I have to, was the, the prof. And, uh, you know, she had her theta pledge pin on and I had my fraternity pledge pin on and, and she looked at me and I looked at her and I says, what, 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 what are you wearing? <laughs> she told me she was a theta <laughs> and I said, it's pretty good, huh? <laughs> she said, yes, it's pretty, pretty good, pretty damn good in fact, I think she said. He just came from Tucson on the weekend sometime and I can't remember when he first met my parents. It'll give you an idea about what the, of the times was there, that her father, uh, a father rode a horse. He had a horse. So he, he rode his horse from home to, to the mines. And then, and then of course, on the return trip, they, he brought the horse home and tied him up to the telephone pole and came in. Uh, he, came, he always came out of the back of and undid his six shooter that he had that he wore, held that up on the hat rack and took his hat off and put it on the hat rack. Babe's mother was really a great person, really. She was born in Louisiana. My father was born in Alabama, and both families had moved to Texas, and that's where they met. My mother was very, very musical. She taught mu 
music. She played organ in the church. and She had come over here one time when we were here, went to summer school at SC and the music, to take music at the music, music school of SC, at SC. Well, we decided to get married after our sophomore year in college and we were married in Nogales, Arizona. We came out here and I went to UCLA and finished school at UCLA and your grandfather took classes at USC. We lived in an apartment over a candy factory on 42nd Street. Not very luxurious, but rather interesting. And then we moved, we moved probably once every two years and while well, I went to UCLA and then we finally moved to Westwood. I, I did a variety of things to get to try to get started. I got a job teaching popular music at the Christensen School of Music down on Grand Avenue. I knew some boys in, uh, that uh, were in my class in, in, in high school in Los Angeles, Monument Arts as a matter of fact, and they, they were working for a firm in Los Angeles known as Patrick and Marsh. It was a booking agent. So it, that's all it took. I probably got through that connection, got two or three nights a week. It developed into to a living. the contract for the orchestra in the Biltmore Hotel. Earl Burtonett was the, was the pianist there and the orchestra leader. But uh, this fellow, was, he just drank too much. He was on the bottom of the time. And it, it got to me to the, to the extent that Patrick and Marsh had called me up at 8 o'clock at night. He said, Earl, just make it tonight. Get your so-and-so down to the Biltmore Hotel. In the music business, I mean, you know, it wasn't a lifetime thing. I played with a group in Warner Brothers. That was KFWB on Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, I might have been three months there, probably. I was six months at, at, in the Mayfair Hotel on 7th Street. There was a contract for six months. They, the business was bad as, at any rate, and they, they tried to close out the, the, the room. But we had a contract, so we stayed on for six months. KHJ was up above the Cadillac Agency, and I, I used to work there maybe every Friday night. They had a program there with a, with a group. At another time, I accompanied a quartet advertising for a funeral parlor, and the, 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 all, all there was just the four people singing, uh, and, and I accompanied them. I had been, in the meantime, I had been working on the on, on, on sideline, what is known as in the motion picture studios. And sideline was uh, uh, atmosphere music for the, for the actors and the actresses. And this was all silent pictures, so the music played right along because there was no sound, right, you see. Exactly. And I just fell into it. However I fell into this, I'll never know. But in any case, I got myself a portable organ, and we had a team. And I pumped in an organ, had a violinist there, and I worked pictures at, at, at Fox, and I worked pictures at, at United Artists, and then immediately sound came in. And that, that, that finished that type of work, because you couldn't use that in, well, well, people were talking anyway, because the music would be interfering, you see. I had been playing with, with, with Gus Arnheim's orchestra. They were going to Europe, and I had an opportunity of going with them. So it developed that he, they made him the musical director at RKO Studio, and he's going off to Europe. So he recommends Howard Lockheed to Bill LeBaron. Bill LeBaron is president of RKO Studios, and he's out from New York getting things lined up and everything. So the music department, there was no one in the music department. But they had to try out singers, they had to try out dancers. They brought Pearl Eaton from New York, who was a choreographer. Everybody that, that got a job at RKO Studio 
I had to, had to be the, the, the accompanist for them, whether they were dancing or whether they were singing. And that led to recordings, and uh, I was on every, sh every, every musical that they made over there, in one capacity or another, from either rehearsing or working with the orchestras or all these things. See? Constance Bennett was uh, the lead in the picture. It was a uh, saloon of, uh, idea, a, a Western. But in any case, I was the pianist in the, in, the, in the beer hall or in the saloon. And I'm sitting at the piano stool and noodling around on the, on the Western stuff. And I said, hello. I'm supposed to say, hello, Judy. How are you? Right. Yeah. <laughs> the line comes out, jello, hootie. <laughs> What can I? What the, that was uh, the beginning, my end of the, in the, in the, my acting career. Jello, hoodie, how are you, or something? My father, in the meantime, had opened a music store between Olympic and Eleventh Street on Broadway, strictly a, 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 a used instrument store, and he advertised across the front of the thing in bold letters, "Save one half or better." See, my father made it possible for me to go in and have a third interest. He, he, had a, he had a partner and they each had 50% interest in it. The big stores that handled only new products, all the time that anyone would come in there that would want to sell or used instruments, they, they would say, we don't handle any used instruments at all, go down to Lockheed, see? Well, these big stores were keeping us out in, 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 in merchandise, A. And B, of course, when the Depression hit, and these people didn't own these buildings to begin with, and they had these high rents to pay, and they were folding like you can't believe. Wurlitzers had to give up here. Southern California Music Company lost a lot of their lines. Burkell Music Company lost their lines. Platt Music Company lost their lines. As fast as these people lost those lines, we picked them up. You know, we ended up with all the lines. I mean, to say that we were terribly uh, successful it doesn't also prove that I have any great ability on my part, necessarily, <laughs> except, except that I played professionally in Los Angeles, and Los Angeles didn't have 10,000 musicians then. They had, they had maybe four, five, or 600 musicians, probably, that were playing on the key jobs. I worked all these key jobs. These kids came in, or these, these musicians, or they called me by their first name. They didn't know who the hell my father was, and they knew less who, the, who his partner was. And this is the only time I'm ever gonna brag about anything, to you or ever, or anyone else, for that matter. But the, the, this com this company went to went from a, a, a used instrument store, a little hawk shop, you might even say, to the, the leading. We had we had more we did more business in Los Angeles than the Selmer's factory store on 48th Street in New York. I, I think it's a wonderful family. We have a son, a great son, and a, and a wonderful daughter. They have some wonderful children, all of them, in fact. Nine of them we have, grandchildren. And I love them all dearly, and at times I could kill them. <laughs> <laughs> We've been a very close family, and I think really one of the reasons is that their lives, as, as best I can remember, revolved around their, their children and their family. They're all extraordinarily wonderful. <laughs> There's opportunities for, for instance, were not planned, Howard. A lot of boys today think uh, people, young people, figure out, you know, they figure this out. I, I never figured anything out like that. I mean, m maybe I should have. Maybe I wouldn't have done what I did if I had. Through the, my, the music experience that I've had, in all phases, from playing to merchandising to manufacturing. I think that, that music has paid us, has, has, has been very good to us. We've probably taken as many as 10 trips to Europe, and I mean, I, there's probably not a hell of a lot of people that, that, that can boast that. We've been all through South America, we've been around the world. From what else would have come? I didn't rob a bank, Howard. It's a music business. There's five, ten fingers, let's say. So, that's, that's as much as I'm going to say about the accomplishments.